Okay, two new pieces. The first one is without a crop, but it is a uh, piece basically that is a juxtaposition. The two things that are being compared in contrast are this city and the other one. And both are in need of people, and both have seen better days. This is called Buffalo. I walk in the shadows of once great buildings while you dine at places with no history. I let it all hang out with my urgent transparency while people leave your troubled past tired of decoding the mystery. I don't know if you knew, but the good times are greater because they're with you, and tomorrow could be greater than the jokes at your expense. If only you can get past your biases and judgments, maybe you'll see you aren't so worthless to me. I've always loved you, although I don't know you as well as I thought. I admit you make me feel like I'm going out of my mind. You tell me I need to read more. I think you need to see more. Perhaps you can come watch me read sometime. I'm a lost soul with no one to call my own, living a temporary life in my original home, surrounded by thousands but always alone. I walk your streets with nowhere to go, confused by the places I've always known. I'm sure you enjoy the view, but you can't see the beauty like I do. I always thought there was more of you than you've shown. Only attached by the ideas that bind it. But lately the ideas have turned simple-minded, driven by the things that keep us apart. We're overthinking, politicking, narrowed our hearts, and no one's sticking to the principles that made us great. Our resurrection is running so late, and I'm beginning to think it's not worth the wait. But if I really felt we were through, I'd probably leave too, because I find myself afraid of you. There are ghosts around every corner, and I'm haunted by failures and expectations, haunted by the horror of potential that came, never came to pass. Potential miscast, potential romance, and there goes another chance. I missed it, but somehow I'm optimistic. I still think you're in here somewhere, and that's why I can't leave. I have no choice but to believe that things will turn around, and all these jealous sounds will account for what I found. My heart could have gone elsewhere, should have gone elsewhere, but here it stayed. I tried to argue, but I gave it away, and it was still returned. So now I'm concerned that there were that it never will be kept by anyone who holds it as dear as I. You've been through so much that I have to try one more time. I owe you that. I love my city passionately, but I wonder if it'll ever love me back. Okay, this is the one with props. This is my props. It's called Why I Don't Dress. I hate what cars have turned us into. The disconnect the arrogance, the rage, the disrespect, and selfishness. Technology has become the most important thing in our lives. Nothing is more important than our cars. It started with good intentions, but it's gone too far. It's ended in a competition. In their rush to accelerate, in their rush to hate, people react too late to hit their brakes. One little mistake is all it takes before we describe someone as late. Don't forget to strap yourselves in. Me, I don't drive, I fly. Not high in the sky, but through the expressways of my mind. My steps take me to places your car will never find. My bike feels right against the warm, sunny breeze. I can go anywhere I please, just not as fast, as far as you. Now, when I measure a few extra minutes against peace of mind, guess what wins every time? It's no wonder I can't get anyone to know me when we all travel so quickly. How about instead, I give you a summary? Oh wait, you thought I was one of those people, right? One of those bike riders, bus takers, walking types. Oh no, I don't walk, I fly in my sweet convertible ride. I leave your ass behind, and that gust you feel is my dust, because my ride is more reliable than your trust. Oh, you think yours is fine too, but I'm still better than you. Mine's newer, mine's louder, mine's more powerful, and I couldn't be prouder. I have a 2014 two-door Raptop V8 compensator. It has all the toys and distractions one would want in a dangerous moving object. It has satellite radio, coffee maker, PC, DVD, make that HD Blu-ray, and that's just in the front seat. It has all my complexes and inadequacies written all over it, but it can go from zero to 60 in a nanosecond. It has customized features like the ability to cut people off without remorse, and rolling through stop signs when no one's around, unless you count those pedestrians. What color is it? Well, it's not green because that's a stupid color. My exhaust fumes are thicker and stronger than yours. Not bad for a two-door. Don't worry, it only affects those people beneath, or should I say behind me. It 
you can't, if you can keep up, you'll be all right. And those people on foot, well, they sealed their own fates a long time ago. It's certainly not my concern. What goes on outside the compensator doesn't help me cope. But hey, Mr. Driver Man, when you're in your car, you don't know how powerful you are. Any superhero would tell you, and say it with me if you know, with great power comes great responsibility. That's right. When some people get behind the wheel, they change. It makes me wonder if their cars make them someone else or who they really are. We so easily forget who we were before the key got turned. I think you need to hit that AC because you drive too heated, and if you cannot relax, perhaps a bus pass is needed. You can rediscover how lucky you've been to have those keys and live a life bigger than you need. We need more from you. No signal, no brake, cut off, tailgate. Oh, I guess I'll wait for the next light. How foolish of me to think I could cross on red when you think you need to make your right. Maybe I should cross on green instead. I don't know if I'd make it, but at least I know what to expect. Because even though I'm not on the road, I can't take the stress anymore. And I don't know how much longer it'll be before I drop kick someone's door. Yet go on and smile at me again when it's you who can't comprehend that I have the right of way. Your day is arriving. The truth is I'm living proof that you can get road rage when you're not driving. I think I need a second. Yes, it's possible to get road rage, road rage on your feet because even when you walk on sidewalks, you still have to cross some streets. People are out there right now, driving drunk, texting, not paying attention, not aware. I know we all have to get somewhere, but some of us would like to make it there alive. This is why I don't care to drive. I simply cannot trust anyone who thinks they're better than us. So where do we go from here? I won't hold my breath, but maybe someday we'll get it. Recognize and add some common sense to our letters. Understand the consequences before we regret it. Maybe someday, We'll fly. Thank you. Hey, Chico, this is an old one. I haven't done this one in a while. I really enjoy it. And uh, I don't think there's anything to do. It's called Grace. I'll never forget the first time I was afraid. I thought something that didn't exist could harm me. And that's when it began. An irrational fear of something that isn't real. But wait, men can't show fear. I'm a sensitive guy with anvils for wings, and there's one other thing. I'm afraid. I'm afraid life's unfair. I'm afraid life's subtle touch is a little bit rough. I'm afraid to do better. I'm afraid I didn't do enough. I'm afraid to cross the street, even on red. I'm afraid when I ask for Pepsi, I'll get Coke instead. I'm afraid when my next chance is blown. I'm afraid of ending up alone. I'm afraid to get up here and read for you. And somehow I do. I thought men weren't allowed to be afraid. Fear was never given to you. It was learned. While rejection set in and your dreams burned, the passions cried out and our hearts yearned. When our luck wasn't good and it wasn't our turn. I'm afraid politicians have forgotten who they're supposed to be working for. I'm afraid that tomorrow will be just like the tomorrow before. I'm afraid when my eyes are open and I'm not really awake. I'm afraid of getting hurt through other people's mistakes. I'm afraid these words will change faster than I can know them. I'm afraid you won't like this poem, but it's okay. Real talk. If we weren't afraid of the dark, there would be no fire. Being afraid of lying six feet under the ground lifts us higher. Yes, being afraid of an uncertain path makes us live. Being afraid of being taken for granted makes us give. We wouldn't work so hard to succeed if we weren't afraid to fail. We wouldn't be able to breathe if we were afraid to exhale. The things that scare us seem worse than they appear. But the sum of our powers are always greater than the sum of our fears. You are the only one who can tell you you can't. Now think on that the next time you want to quit before you try. Look inside because underneath that fear is a lifetime supply. Bottom line, if you were never afraid, you could never be brave. I'm afraid. He's afraid. She's afraid. We're afraid, but it's all right. Because by the time we get to sleep tonight, that fear will be gone. We'll wake up tomorrow and realize we are that strong, that we've had the courage all along. So bring on your fears and let's defeat them. Obstacles beat them, challenges meet them, lessons greet them, ideas seek them, spam delete them, dreams complete them. We've all got courage to spare, so don't you dare tell me you don't have any. When we're afraid of what we'll lose, then we just prove we must have plenty. Once upon a time, I was afraid too. But I've learned we are braver than we ever knew. All you've got to do is stand up and follow through because no one is braver than you.